Beautiful images of the universe are very fascinating, and capturing your own photographs of celestial objects is achievable with the right amount of time, equipment, and understanding of the process. In this video, we will go over some basic information to help you understand the process of astrophotography. We will cover the differences between solar system and deep sky imaging, what equipment is needed for astrophotography, the imaging process, which includes steps like equipment setup, data acquisition, image processing, and exporting, and some tips and advice that may help you feel more confident in the hobby of astrophotography. There are two different types of astrophotography, solar system and deep sky. Solar system objects include the moon, planets, the sun, comets, and other nearby objects, including satellites, asteroids, and meteors. These are bright objects that require short exposures and specialized techniques to enhance details. A lot of solar system cameras record video files instead of a single exposed image file. A processing technique called stacking is used with the individual frames from a video file, but we'll cover that more during the image processing section of this video. Deep sky astrophotography includes images of star clusters, nebulae, and galaxies. These objects are very faint and far away, so they typically require long exposures. Several hours of accumulated exposure for a single object is very common. Sometimes the photographer will even use exposures from multiple nights of imaging to bring out the desired detail. Because of the time needed for deep sky exposures, processes called tracking and guiding become very important. We'll talk more about those when we talk about equipment and the data acquisition process. There are several pieces of equipment required for any astrophotography, including a telescope, mount, and camera. These are the three most basic elements. There are a variety of cameras that can be used for astrophotography. Cameras include cell phones and point-and-shoot digital cameras that use adapters mounted to an eyepiece, specialized solar system cameras and webcams attached directly to this telescope without an eyepiece, DSLR cameras used for all-purpose photography that require T-rings and other adapters depending on the style of camera body. And finally, specialized CCD cameras made specifically for astronomy that offer the best overall performance in astrophotography. Some of these cameras, like DSLRs, are dual-purpose, so they are great for both solar system and deep sky imaging, while others are just for solar system imaging. And some of the camera styles, like solar system cameras or astronomy CCD cameras, will require a laptop to operate and control the camera's settings. Almost any telescope can be used to take an astrophoto. Short refractors make excellent wide-field telescopes for capturing large swaths of the sky, including rich star fields and colorful nebulae. Reflectors of all sizes are used for astrophotography, too. And like visual astronomy, reflectors offer excellent value for their generally large apertures. In general, long focal length telescopes are desirable for planetary imaging, whereas short to medium focal length telescopes work well for deep sky imaging. The type of mount can vary depending on the style of astrophotography you are pursuing. Solar system images can be taken on altitude azimuth mounts, equatorial mounts, Dobsonian bases, or even generic photo tripods because solar images require very short exposures. Deep sky astrophotography is almost always done on an equatorial mount because they have special tracking capabilities to take much longer exposures. Bright deep sky objects like the Orion Nebula can be captured on a motorized Dobsonian base with tracking capabilities and a great alignment, but these mounts are not set up for very long exposures, so equatorial mounts really do provide the best capabilities for deep sky, in addition to the fact that they are suited to hold many different types of telescopes. Like we mentioned before, a laptop will be required for most astronomy cameras, including IP style cameras or larger CCD cameras. Another important piece of equipment for deep sky imaging is an auto guider. Because objects move in the field of view, the imaging system and mount must track seamlessly with the apparent motion of the night sky to prevent oblong stars or star trailing. Auto guiders help correct and prevent tracking errors that may be unavoidable with motorized equatorial mounts and provide the sharpest images. 
Autoguiders can be coupled to the same telescope used for imaging with the use of an accessory called an off-axis guider, or an autoguider may be attached to a smaller separate telescope called a guide scope. Other accessories such as filters, Barlow lenses, focal reducers, electronic focusers, power supplies, dew zappers, and many more can be and are often used during astroimaging. Now onto the process of capturing your photos. Once you have acquired all the right equipment and established a suitable imaging location, the fun part begins. The first part is equipment setup. This process can take five minutes or an hour or more depending on the equipment and accessories that comprise your imaging setup. Once you've set up your mountain telescope, attached your cameras and accessories, and found the desired object you will be imaging, it is time to begin data acquisition. Data acquisition can be a single exposure or many hours of data collected onto a laptop from a cooled CCD imaging camera. The data acquisition process is completely unique to each imaging setup and the object being imaged. There is no right or wrong exposure time. Astrophotography involves a lot of trial and error, but the more you practice, the more comfortable you will feel when acquiring data for the next image. Once an image is captured, you can begin refining it and enhancing the detail in a very important step called image processing. Image processing is the conversion of raw data to a final composed image which can later be refined in post-processing. Like we mentioned earlier, some solar system imaging cameras will record video files during data acquisition. One of the processing techniques used for solar system images is called stacking. Stacking takes multiple frames from a video file and layers them on top of each other to bring out finer details of an object. Registax is a very common program for stacking images of the moon and planets. Deep sky processing is a little more complicated. The ultimate goal is to eliminate as much noise as possible while improving the good signal that contains the faint details of the astrophoto. A typical workflow for deep sky image processing includes calibration, removal of noise and imaging artifacts using dark frames and flat fields, raw to color conversion if using a one-shot color camera, image alignment and stacking which is often done in one simple step with most software programs, and post-processing, which is further enhancement of images performed in an image editing program such as Adobe Photoshop. This is almost always done in deep sky photos to bring out the delicate and subtle features of a deep sky object. Once an image is finished in post-processing, the final step is exporting, so the end result can be viewed and shared. Common file formats include web-friendly JPEGs and TIFFs, but be sure to save the best quality master copy of your astrophoto, which can be a 16-bit TIFF or specialized format like a Photoshop PSD file. Then you can export any number of versions of your work into smaller file sizes for sharing. Now that we have a general understanding of the equipment and imaging process for astrophotography, we have some additional advice to help you learn more. A good starting point is to check out local star parties or astronomy clubs and see if anyone there is an astro imager. If so, you can ask them specific questions or see what equipment they recommend and why. The internet is an especially helpful place to find more information about astrophotography and astronomy in general. There are a number of online forums with tips and techniques on astrophotography, as well as several articles and videos which you can find in the community section of the Orion website. YouTube can be another great resource. One of our featured customers, Doug H., has a fantastic channel with several tutorials on post-processing techniques and equipment selection. Doug is an avid imager who is more than willing to share his own experiences and advice, so please visit his YouTube channel, youtube.com slash dougdog, or visit his personal imaging site, myastroimages.com. Astrophotography, especially deep sky imaging, can seem very complex and technical, so doing your research is important. Reading the instruction manuals, searching for answers online, talking to other astro imagers, or even purchasing a book about astro-imaging can help you feel much more comfortable. And of course, the last thing to remember is to have some fun. Astrophotography is a great hobby, but you need to be aware that it can be frustrating at times too. Part of photography is learning from your mistakes and understanding how to improve. 
practice, practice, practice. Once you refine your skills, you'll be able to capture stunning photographs of our universe that amaze yourself, your family, and your friends. We hope this video was helpful to you and from all of us at Orion, clear skies. This video contains several astro photographs that were captured with a wide range of equipment in varying locations and under different sky conditions. These photos are intended merely as examples to supplement the processes and techniques we discussed in this video. They do not represent what you will see visually through a telescope. You can find more information about each photograph in the image galleries of telescope.com. Thank you.